Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Good yes, morning, ma'am. Good morning. The recording is started. Okay. Before we could begin with the class, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time you have given us. Lord, we pray even as we come before your presence to learn from your word. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us and enrich us in your word, O oh God. Let your word dwell in our hearts richly, Lord Jesus. Help us to replicate what you are teaching us in our daily lives, O oh God. We submit us uh, Diana to your hands and ask for your grace to be with her. And let us all grow together in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, I receive your comments on e-learning portal, requesting to explain on the word of knowledge. So I thought uh, for the benefit of everyone, I can explain it in the class so that all of us uh, can understand better. So what the person was asking was to share some insights or uh, my personal experience uh, when how uh, like how the word of knowledge started to flow. Okay. So we all know the gift of the word of knowledge. Uh, it reveals something in the present or from the past. And the Holy Spirit can give us the word of knowledge that can help us in decision making process or uh, for us uh, along with the you know, path that what God wants us to do. So I thought I'll share some insights from my uh, from my personal life, uh, how how this particular gift, uh, you know, uh, how I started to flow in this particular gift. Yes, in the class, I'm sure many of us would have experienced or uh, would be flowing in the gift. And for some of us who are new, you know, I want to tell you, word of knowledge, words of knowledge are an amazing gift from God. And it's given uh, its purpose of, you know, it's, it is given to encourage people's faith, to exhort them and to live righteously. And also this through this gift, we can confirm the truth of the gospel. And we can use this gift through evangelism. You know, when we go out on evangelism, God speaks to us. God will be leading us. Talk to this person. And when you go and talk to that person, and you keep, uh, keep praying in spirit. When we keep praying in spirit, God will just give us certain words, certain things. Yes, we need to take the risk. We need to take the risk of asking that person. Sometimes it flows step by step. It flows step by step. Many times in Manglo, when we go to this campus, uh, uh, campus ministry to the colleges, you know, they all are new students, different type of students we would be meeting. But then we start praying in tongues. We start praying in tongues. God reveal to us what they're going through. How we can touch upon each and every student's life. When we pray, God speaks to us. And when we obey, it goes step by step. For example, I would like to share is in one of the colleges, a very reputed college in Mangalore. So I used to take one class on theology. So for the class of theology, only Christian students would be part of this class. Only Christian students will be part of this class. And for the other uh, students of other faith, they would have a moral science class or, you know, they have some other class for them. So one such day, uh, you know, I, I was just inspired in my spirit uh, when I was uh, teaching them about the Holy Spirit. God asked me, ask for somebody if they have a pain in their leg. I've not done this before in a school setup, in a classroom. But then I just asked, step out, stepped out, you know, in faith. I took that risk and asked. Is there anyone 
who have a pain. I actually thought it may be a headache. Okay, but then God asked me to ask if there's anyone who have a pain. Uh, but then there was a guy who said, who raised his hand. And I asked him, what happened? And he told me, I have a pain in my right knee. In my right knee, uh, you know, due to which I'm unable to bend my knee. He could not bend his leg like this. He could not bend. So I called him out and I asked him to try once again. He said he cannot. This uh, I mean, he could he could just bend his leg only so much, not completely. He could not bend his leg. It was just like this, and it was hurting him. There was pain in his right knee. I said, "Okay." I made him sit on the chair. I said, "The class." Can we pray? Do we believe that the Holy Spirit can heal him? The class was silent. And just before that, you know, I played some videos, the healing videos, like how uh, a servant of God stepping out, praying for people and how the Holy Spirit works, just brings healing. There's no any superpower of manifestation, nothing. He just lays his hand, pray over them, and the person has been healed. So this video has already generated a faith in the students. And now when we do the practical, along with the teaching and the, with the visual, what they saw, and now there's certain level of faith has been already generated in the students. Now, when I asked them for the practical session, they said, yes. I said, okay, let's go pray over this boy. I just laid his hand and we prayed simple words. We said, Lord, you touch him and heal him. A knee be loosened. Pain, we commanded the pain to leave his leg. Simple prayer. We prayed in Jesus' name. And after that, I asked this guy to stand up, try to bend his knees. You know, he bent his leg and he could fully do it. The class was surprised and he was so happy. And after that, this guy surprised all of us. When I asked him for his name, he uttered a Muslim name. He uttered a Muslim name. And later we got to know this was the first time that he has come to a theology class and the Holy Spirit exactly touched him and healed him. He just wanted to know. He just wanted to know what do they teach in a theology class. All his life he's been attending, you know, the moral science class, uh, which is available in all these schools and colleges here for the children of the other faith. So he wanted to know what is, uh, you know, the Christians teach in the theology class. Let me go and see. He just, you know, he just came to visit. But you see, the Holy Spirit knows. That's the important thing that we need to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. And as we pray, the Lord leads uh, I would like to share one more instance. Is, uh, where, and the last company that I worked with, a professional company where I was working with, uh, I was working under a boss who was, uh, you know, uh, a servant of God. So he had a family retreat, his family retreat. And he asked me, uh, you know, I, I joined him to volunteer in that retreat. So on the second day, I guess, when the preacher who had come to... Uh, uh, conduct the retreat he asked if i could come and you know a pray because there were many people there were about 100 people so he said if i could also join him and praying for the people i said okay so during the ministry time as we laid our hands on was praying so i was pr praying for one young girl maybe she was in a high school or the college i was just praying i don't know her i'm meeting this person for the very first time so during the ministry time, as I prayed, you know, God showed me through a vision. See, last time when I uh, I was praying, it was just an inspiration of a word. Ask if somebody has a pain. And this time it was a visual. I could see that, you know, um, there was not a good relationship between a father and the daughter. And the daughter was yearning for father's love. Okay, this was the uh, picture that I saw, and I could sense what she was, what she was yearning for. 
as I was praying for, I just asked a few questions. I asked her, like, you know, uh, how was your relationship with your dad? And I asked her, are you yearning for your dad's love? The minute I asked, it was like, uh, it is like uh, spotting to the point. She wept for some time. She wept and wept. She started crying. And then I started praying in tongues and Lord started ministering to her. Started giving out few details about her past. And she was only agreeing and listening. And then God, you know, brought a restoration. You know, God said, I'm forgiving you. I sense the Lord telling, I'm forgiving you and I'm restoring this relationship with your dad. And after the prayer, I just prayed for her for the restoration and she was filled with God's love. And this relationship was also restored back with God. And at the end of the retreat, she hugged her dad. Because it was a family retreat, the whole family was there. She just went and hugged her dad and asked for sorry. And her relationship with her dad was restored back. So God gives us this word, uh, words of knowledge and words of wisdom is to edify the people, exhort and edify the church. So yes, it is a risk, but we need to step out. When we step out, step by step, God releases. You know, he gives us the picture what we need to do next. How do we, uh, you know, flow in these gifts? We flow by having an intimacy with God. We need to have, we need to develop this relationship with God where we can hear the voice, where we can sense uh, the Holy Spirit speak to us. We need to get our spirit tuned to that voice. And the third will be taking risk. First is we need to develop the intimacy with God. Second is we need to be tuned to his voice. And the third is taking risk. So when we do this, we develop, we develop. The faith has been generated in us step by step, step by step. You can see how the Holy Spirit talks to us and he flows in us. So next time you'll be so much with confidence, like, okay, this is what the Lord is speaking. This is how he speaks. And how everything that has been taught in the class and everything that we read in our notes, when you exercise it, you will understand it better. One thing for sure we need to know that our God is um, not partial. And, he, and we all of us, all of us have this gift within us. It's already there within us. And we need to activate this gift. How? By praying, developing this intimacy with God, getting ourselves tuned to his voice. And the third is by taking risk. And the safe place to take risk is in the set of a classroom here. Yes, as this class is Minister's Foundation and uh, we are just uh, uh, sharing, uh, sharing the knowledge, how we can hear God guiding us, Holy Spirit guiding us. But then we also have a subject on the Holy Spirit where, you know, we will have uh, the privilege or the opportunity to, uh, to, to, uh, to practice it. We'll have a practical session in the class of the Holy Spirit. I guess that's for the first year we have that class. Pastor Jakes is teaching that, right? Yes, Pastor. Yeah. So, you know, we will have the practical session to do that. And we also have on uh, Fridays, we have Supernatural Hour, where, all, uh, we, where we recommend all the students to be part of that Supernatural Hour morning 8 to 9. So that that's the time where we can pray in tongues. And even if those who do not have tongues, when we pray, this gift gets activated because we are desiring for this gift. When we desire, when we pray, 
this gift gets activated. Who is the giver of the gift? Who is the giver of the gift? Holy Spirit. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit. And the good news is the Holy Spirit is already within us, within each of us. That's what John chapter 14, verse 16 says, when the Holy Spirit comes within you and he abides with you forever. So that's the good news. We all have the Holy Spirit. And when we pray, when we desire, as I said, gift of tongues is the only gift that we need to desire and it gets activated. And once this gift gets activated, all the other gifts will be automatically activated within us in time, in time. I never asked for any of, uh, you know, other than the gift of tongues, I never desired for any other gift. But as I kept praying and stepping out in faith, you know, these gifts started activating. The vi seeing visions, seeing dreams, or, you know, looking at visuals, whatever I could sense, I started asking, is it so? I, I, uh, remember, we don't say, thus says the Lord, like the Old Testament prophets. Okay, we just say, is it something like this? Do you have a pain? I know uh, God has put the sense within you, but when we share it, when we put it across, uh, we have a class on the prophetic where we will uh, we will be learning on how to release the prophecy. There's also, if you go to our APC publications, there is a book called Understanding the Prophetic. You can download and read in detail. There's also a class on it, maybe in the second semester or third, you will be learning in detail. And again, you will have the chance to practice all that we learn now. We'll have a hand-on training there. We usually have this training when we have the in-person class. Every day in the afternoon, 12 to 1, we used to have the supernatural hour every day, every day in our college. And, you know, all the students get together, starts worshipping and praying in tongues. And you see one after the other, these gifts used to get activated to our students. We saw students flowing in, um, you know, a gift of prophecy or, you know, songwriting, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, releasing to each other. We see manifestation of the gifts of the spirit there. So I would recommend all of us to be part of the Supernatural Hour, which happens once a week, every Friday, 8 to 9. Okay? I know I'm not part of it because um, only one of us could be my husband or I. So my husband, uh, you know, he's part of it. Paul Emmanuel is part of uh, it. So I stay back. But then I encourage all of us to be part of this session which would be a blessing to each of us. You never know how the gifts of the Spirit can get activated in the corporate setup, okay? So with this, we will move on to dreams and visions. Today's session, I'll just share the notes. Everyone can see this presentation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we are in such a time where God is pouring out His Spirit on each of us where we all can uh, see dreams, visions, where we could receive and also prophesy. How all this can happen is only when we open ourselves, when we have this intimate relationship with God and we, we are ready saying, Lord, you use us. 
you flow in and through us you speak in and through us the minute we surrender ourselves because our holy spirit is a gentleman he only moves in and through us the minute we welcome him we say lord you activate these gifts in and through us that's the main reason why we teach and also we share the practical experience what we had so that we understand that these are real they're not just theory spirit of the lord moves in and through us so what we there are 11 ways where the holy spirit can speak in and through us and at the same time we don't put god in a box and say god can speak only through the 11 ways and not out of it no let's not do that but these are the 11 way is uh, 11 ways which commonly people have been documented it's been documented and experienced so we have listed all these 11 ways but that god can speak to us in n number of ways we need to understand that and you know not to judge okay this is how god speak to us and this is not the way okay let's not put god in a box so we studied on uh, how uh, through word god speaks to us through his word um, through the inner witness of the holy spirit and also through the voice of the holy spirit and last week we studied about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And today we will study on the dreams, visions, and prophecies. Angels we won't be covering. Dreams and visions and prophecies. Fifth and sixth chapter. So if we can turn to fifth and sixth chapter in our books, the PDF version. And I would request one of us to please read Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Amen. So God speaks to us through dreams, through visions, through prophecy. So there are three different sources through which God can speak to us. Yes, some of us can be preoccupied in our mind. And sometimes that comes as a dream as well. But some of our dreams are God speaking to us. And at the same time, there are dreams that even demons can speak to us in our sleep. But we need to be sure. Those can be the bad dreams. So how do I uh, handle those bad dreams? What if it comes true? We have the power to cancel the dream. We have the power to cancel any curse, any dream, any unpleasant word that is not aligned with the word of God or in God's plan. We have the power to cancel it. You have to just simply go and say, in the name of Jesus, I cancel this dream. Some unpleasant dream that is not from God, that is disturbing you. You can just go and cancel those dreams. But the dreams that are from God would be to edify us, warn us, build us. Because that's what Jeremiah 29 says, I have a plan to prosper you, to give you a success, that will be a good dream which will edify, sometimes dreams warn us. Sometimes the dreams guides us and God speaks to us through these dreams. So Psalms 16, Psalms chapter 16, verse 7. And one of us please read. I want all of us from our class to take turns and read the scripture so that we can keep ourselves much interactive in this way. Nas? 
Sid, Zilatoli, Hello. Roslyn, Brother Abdesh. Yes, please, Brother Isaac. Psalms 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also entrusts me in the night session. Thank you. Amen. God gives us his counsel and he instructs us, instruct us in night season. Very true. Very true. He counsels us. Many times we have received a dream which will counsel us, which will give us an idea. Maybe we are praying and asking God. We are praying and asking God uh, for some kind of suggestion or some kind of direction. And when we wait on him, you know, God speaks to us in, in dreams and he can counsel us. He can direct us in the path that we need to go. Even in the night. Let's turn to June chapter 33, Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 18. Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 18. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Mm. Yeah, so from this passage, we see that Job 33, it's very interesting to see that how God speaks to his people in dreams. When we are sleeping, when we are resting, he open up our ears and uh, causing us to hear his word. And here he's talking about the spiritual here, not the natural one. He imparts his instruction, his guidance, his direction to us through dreams so that we can attempt and be cautious so that we don't fall into any, any problem or we don't make any error. Uh, recently I had a dream which was repeated two times because I didn't take an action. I had a dream in the night that, uh, you know, uh, my uncle, uh, my uncle, my mom's brother was unwell. So I had a dream that he's unwell and they're asking me to pray for him. Uh, and morning, then I got up, I could clearly remember the dream. I thought I need to call him and pray. But then I was busy with our class, so I came, I was, you know, for the class. And I thought, okay, after the class, I will call him up. After the class, you know, again, I was busy with our e-learning portal work, and, you know, I, I kept myself busy, and I missed to call him. And then after that, and I started preparing for the next day class. And as I was preparing, I, I was so tired. I thought, okay, I will rest for 30 minutes. I just rested. And while I was resting, this dream comes again. This dream comes again. For example, if it's on a Monday, it was on a Monday. So I get a dream on Sunday night. I remember it in Monday morning, I had a class. Then again, that evening, I just rested. Maybe around evening, 4, 4.30, late evening, it was, yeah, I, just, I was just resting, I had this dream, and immediately I got up, immediately I got up, I don't think I would have rested even for the 30 minutes, you know, maybe the whole purpose was God to remind me of the instance, he, he gave me sleep, it was something like that, I just slept, I had this dream, immediately I got up, and I started praying, I started praying. I said, sorry, Lord, I could not uh, call, up, but then I'll start praying now. I prayed. I prayed and I was, again, occupied with my own work. I didn't call my uncle, but I prayed for it. The next day, it was on a Tuesday, after the class in the afternoon, again, I had sensed I need to call him. I need to call him and check how he is. 
he's a very healthy man there was no problem with him he was healthy i just called him when i called him i just asked how are you doing uncle i just thought i inquired and that's when he said nancy yesterday at 5 o'clock there was a heaviness on my chest and i felt like i'm going to have an heart attack and he was all alone at home his kids were out on work there was no one so he had to rush himself to an hospital and he could not go to a hospital so he has ran to a nearby clinic he's a very elderly person he's in his late 60s he rushed himself to the clinic and you know he he tried to explain to the doctor what he uh, he had i don't know whether after doctor giving him an injection he vomited or i, I don't know exactly what happened but then his condition was very critical and doctor you know intervened and she gave the timely treatment which saved him which and that evening he was better he uh, you know he just went to a clinic and she gave him an injection and you know he puked and you know he was feeling better after that you know within a nas time he was recovered and uh, you know um, though the family asked him should we take you to the hospital he said he is he's feeling better and he was much better the next day when i was speaking to him you see how the lord can intervene and lord can ask us to pray it's not that every time we get a dream we have to call that person but what is very important is god is asking us to pray for that person so we need to pray that is important so that god can move on our behalf god can move god can bring a healing god can bring a deliverance god can uh, you know um, shows the direction so we need to pray whenever god uh, reminds us it uh, through dream or through vision or he just puts that sense within us we need to just pray for that person and when we pray god moves okay with this we will move on to the next point next slide and we see god speaks to us through dreams god speaks to us through dreams you know the first is meet and encounter us can one of us please read genesis 28 chapter 12 and others each one please take up each verse corinth uh, we can take uh, acts chapter 18 verse 9 to 11 and the next person take up matthew chapter 1 verse 20 and the other person take up matthew chapter 2 verse 19 to 21 okay whoever is taken genesis chapter 28 verse 12 can read genesis chapter genesis chapter 28 verse 12 he had a dream in which he saw a staircase resting on the earth with its top reaching to the heaven and the angels of the god were ascending and descending on it so god met jacob there and he had an encounter there with god and that's called as jacob's ladder we encountered god and he saw god ascending and descending the presence of god the angels ascending and descending the next verse encourage us how god encouraged paul at corinth acts chapter 18 verse 9 to 11 acts chapter 18 verse 9 to 10 then speak the lord paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold no stay peace for I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in the city amen amen 
And can one of us read Joseph? Sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Amen. You see how God is instructing and teaching Joseph? Because Joseph thought he could silently put aside Mary. But then, here we see God sent an angel to instruct him, to teach him. In the same way, the next point we see to direct and guide again, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and says, take the child and move to Egypt. Again, such instances we see continuously reveals the future events, like how in, in the Old Testament, God revealed Joseph through a dream where all the 12 brothers will bow down to him and ask for help. And the next point we see reveal secret things to us. Can one of us turn to Genesis 31, verse 10 to 13? Genesis chapter 31, verse 10 to 13. In breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and I saw that the male goats mating with the flocks were streaked, speckled or spotted. The angel of the God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flocks are streaked, speckled and spotted. For I have seen that all Laban has is being doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. You see how God can instruct us, reveal the secret things. A God is a God who sees us. There's nothing hidden. Though Laban was cheat, I mean, cheating Jacob, but God is watching over Jacob. He wants to bless Jacob. So God reveals the secret things to Jacob. As Jacob trusted the same thing that what he saw in the dream, he saw it happening. God is a God of blessing. And at the same time, God reveals the secret things to his children. He does not give us a surprise. He always reveals it, reveals it to his children before in hand. The same thing we see correct and realign us. And the example you are given is Abimelech. Abimelech was warned in a dream not to touch Sarah. God clearly says, Abimelech, though he had the power with him, God clearly says, I will kill you. You will die if you touch. You need to hand over Sarah to her husband, Abraham. And this brings a fear into Abimelech. And also there's a curse upon his kingdom. And God says you need to ask Abraham to pray for all the female in his kingdom so that they may not be barren, but they'll give birth to a child. See how God can do it. The same God who was with Jacob, with Abraham, with Isaac, same God is with us. He is watching us, he is guiding us, he speaks to us, he reveals the secret things to us because he desires to live in and through us. And he corrects us even when we are doing wrong. I remember one day like when um, I didn't have a solution, I was about to do something wrong. Suddenly, in middle of the night, God just woke me and gave me a verse. He gave me a verse. You know, even if we are in deep sleep, when God wakes us, that sleep leaves us. And I was so fresh. I took my Bible, I opened it, and I went to that verse to read. And clearly God was directing me to the thing what I was about to do. God does not desire for his children, uh, you know, to get into any kind of error. 
he warns us and he protects us for that we need to give that right to god asking god god you know you help me you guide me you help me not to sin you you guide me from making any kind of mistake you know god reminds us and that day he ministered to me through that verse and come i i i could completely avoid that mistake or avoid that sin or avoid that error praise god you know he alerts and warns us in that way so this way when we depend on god god speaks to us but this will move on to the next visions god can you use visions to give us uh, you know he he guide he gives us to guide and direct us god uses vision to guide us and direct us and we see different kinds of vision here one is the spiritual vision second is the trance third is the open vision and we see travel in vision fourth and fifth is transported in spirit the spiritual vision can be the most common for every believer every believer when we depend on god god gives us the vision through that vision he can guide us in the right path it can be a picture a visual a symbolic it can be anything what god wants to reveal to us or you can also uh, you know that uh, that picture vision it can guide us to take the right path or it can also strengthen us maybe we are going through a situation or circumstance and uh, or even before you can go through you don't know what to do or uh, the path that you're heading the phase that uh, you know you're going to move the next face in your life you don't know what god has in store for you but here god reveals it before in hand like the way how he revealed it to paul even before you could go to rome you know there's a person comes and wants paul saying that i see your both the hands are changed he come ties his hand and he says this is how i see when you go to rome you will be you will be in chains so paul is warned before in hand but knowing everything paul goes because that is what god has in store for him but at the same time he's been strengthened saying that the lord is with him even through the difficult time he's not been abandoned we also see a vision a, a dream a, a, you know when a, no it's a vision in acts 16 chap uh, verse 9 to 10 we see and a vision appeared to paul in the night a man of macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying come over to macedonia and help us now after he had seen the vision immediately we sought to go to macedonia concluding that the lord had called us to preach the gospel to them there so before this could happen there were other two places when paul and barnabas wanted to go Uh, not Paul and Barnabas. I guess it was Silas. Okay, they were stopped. Paul was stopped. Holy Spirit did not allow him to go, but he was stopped in the mission. And then, when Paul was praying and pondering, he gets this vision that a person in a Macedonian man was calling him. and you know he knows which place to go he journeys to that place and you see what happened god opened up a new door god ministered to that people the church was birthed there same way the lord can direct us in a vision now what is a dream and what is a vision dream is something that you get when you're asleep and vision is something that you that you get to see when you are awake when you are awake and uh, the second we see a trance we see in acts 
9 to 16, Acts 10, 9 to 16. Acts 10, 9 to 16. Peter's yes. vision. About noon, the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heavens open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kind of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and the birds of the air. Then a voice told them, uh, told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord. Peter replied. Okay, I thank have you, Sid. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, thank you. So we know the story, what happened. Peter was awake. He was in the terrace sitting and here in a trance. That means he was awake. Maybe he was just closing his eyes and praying just for a moment. He could see the vision. He could see that, you know, in a trance, the vision appears like a, a sheet uh, of all types of animals that come. So what happened? God was convicting. God was conveying a message to Peter. What he said is holy. What God has cleansed you must not call as common. And this was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven. And following this, a three man came and called Peter to Cornelius' house because Peter was very particular about ministering only to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. So through this vision, God conveyed a message to Peter and he opened his heart to minister even to the Gentiles and not only to the Jews because God is, is a God to all the people and not to just one particular set. And through this, when he ministered to the house of Cornelius, we know what happened. The Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius and his household. And this opened up the understanding of Peter that he could understand that God loves everyone and the Holy Spirit himself came upon them. And what am I? How can I choose to minister only to the Jews and not to the Gentiles? So this opened up the ministry to the Gentiles and all the apostles you know, started ministering to everyone around them. And there was also, uh, next point, we see the open vision where Peter, we see in the Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 6, we see Peter, James and John saw an open vision of Jesus transfigured along with Moses and Elijah. In the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw what was actually happening in the spiritual realm at that time. You see, that's open vision, something happening in the natural and they have been ministered to. And then uh, we will move on to the traveling in the vision. We see uh, they have been uh, transported from one place to the other, from the natural world to the spiritual world, in a vision. And your spirit, soul and body are in one place, but you have been traveling in a vision, geographically as well as in time. Into the past and into the future. Something very nice our kids get to watch is the super book. You know, in super book, they show the kids in the natural, but they get to travel to the past of the times. It's just a demonstration for us to understand, to go back to the time and see. But many of our prophets have been experienced that way. We see in the book of Ezekiel. And we also see that in the book of Daniel as he was transported in a vision and saw what was happening in the future so that they could narrate it and write. And we see many such experiences. You know, I read a book of Heidi Baker called Compelled by Love. There she also shares an uh, insight of how in spirit she was taken to different places and how Lord ministered to pray and minister to those people. 
she was trans i mean in a spirit she was transported from one place to the other and we also see transported in spirit the last point is where our spirit leaves our body and travels and observe the things in the natural and the spiritual world we see in the book of revelations chapter 4 verse 1 to 4 john was caught up to the heavens and we also see in the book of second corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 paul shares his experience as how he was caught up to the third heavens we also see dr dj s dinagarin in our time who has shared his heavenly visit most of his uh, uh, sharing on the heavenly visit has been available on youtube i think it's heavenly insights or something with that topic but you can put dr dj s dinagarin he just shares of his experience when he prays how his spirit went to the heaven and lord started showing him and sharing and giving him greater insights of god so we need to uh, we need to receive this dreams and we need to be open enough to receive dreams and visions because this is how the lord speaks to us through vision and through his dreams okay only when we are open god speaks to us in these areas he can flow in and through us the god who spoke to all the prophets in the old testament and in the new testament all the apostles and to many other leaders and has how god is speaking to each of us in our own time to all our ministry leaders and to all the believers god can speak to each one of us even in our class we are attending here many of us would have experienced the way god speaks to us in dreams visions prophecies let's be open for those who are new keep it open ask god god speak to me open this realm of dreams and visions that i could hear you that i could see things happen that you can be you know warn me guide me and instruct me and when we pray like this you see these things getting opened up in the spiritual realm to you and me and we can start experiencing it okay with this i'll we'll take a short break okay we'll come back after 10 minutes now it's uh, yeah indian time it's 9:54 10 minutes from now okay thank you god bless